After a 10-year absence, ex-Texas Ranger Jake Spoons shows up in Lonesome Dove. He had once served with Captains Call and McCrae during the early days. Jake was what some people would call a likable lad. He was on the run from Arkansas for accidentally killing a dentist with a stray bullet, promising the local prostitute that he would take care of her and take her to San Francisco, although he had no intentions of following through. Jake was prone to getting into trouble by going along and not being able to say no. It will eventually get him hung, even by his friends. Robert Michael Urick played the part of Jake Spoons in Lonesome Dove's miniseries. Robert Urick was born the 19th of December, 1946, in the steel town of Toronto, Ohio. His parents was John Paul Urick and Cecilia Monica Urick. John Paul was a local plant foreman, and Cecilia was a homemaker and took in laundry. Robert had two brothers, Tom and Dave. He had one sister, Monica. Tom and Dave will become actors after growing up, and Monica will marry and raise a loving family. Being raised in a small steel mill town, Robert will attend Ontario High School, graduating in 1964. Being a good student and an outstanding football player, captain of the high school team, he'll receive four years football scholarship to Florida State University. Here in Florida State in 1965, he'll play center for the Seminoles. He'll only play one season after a football injury. And in 1967, Robert met Barbara Rucker. The next year in 1968, he will graduate from Florida State with a BS degree in radio and TV communications. He will also marry Barbara Rucker. After marriage, he will work for a short while until deciding to attend Michigan State University, finally receiving a master's in broadcasting research and management. Barbara worked to help support the two. Robert will then go to work at station WGN Radio in Chicago as a sales account representative and for a short time he'll serve as a weatherman on television. During this time, Robert met actor Burt Reynolds. They had a lot in common. Both were alumni of Florida State University. They both went on a football scholarship, and both were injured playing ball. In 1972, Reynolds gave Urich a break into show business by allowing him to play his younger brother in the play The Rainmaker at the Arlington Park Theater in Arlington Heights, Illinois. The production run from 9 March 1972 until April 2, 1972. The three weeks run gave Robert his first taste of show business at $225 per week, while the star, Burt Reynolds, was making $7,000 per week. After the play closed, Reynolds talked Garrick into going to California and trying his hand in the movies. He even allowed him to stay in his house until he got his career going. Burt Reynolds said that Bob Urich was one of those people who never said anything bad about anybody. He was a friend and one of those rare people who was never unkind. That seemed to be the general feeling in Hollywood from everybody who had ever worked with Robert Urich. Shortly after arriving in Los Angeles, Urich made his television debut on the FBI, a weekly show that starred Eflin Zimbalist Jr. The very next year in 1973, Robert won a lead role in the television show entitled Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice. The show was placed opposite the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour and NBC's top show, Adam 12. The show was canceled after two months. Yurt was once asked about the show Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, and the only thing he says was, yep, that lasted about 15 minutes. However, that same year, Robert made his debut appearance in a film, 
magnum force that starred Clint Eastwood. Yurik had five lines as a motorcycle cop, Officer Mike. He was supposed to spin out on his motorcycle in one of his last scenes. However, he had neglected to tell the director that he had had little experience on a motorcycle. So as he spin out, he lost control and run over all the rest of the cycles and ruined the scene. The next year in 1974, after six years of marriage, Robert Urich and Barbara Rucker divorced. Now, after the divorce, Barbara will continue her acting career with The Stepford Wives, A Man Called Sloan, and a TV soap, As the World Turns. While Robert was working on commercials for Libby Corn Beef Hash, he met actress Heather Menzies. Heather was known best for her role as Louisa Von Trapp in the classic 1965 film, The Sound of Music, that starred Julie Andrews. Now, Heather is on the left side in the back next to Julie. Heather Menzies and Robert Yurk was married the next year in 1975. The same year he married Heather, Yurk was picked to play Officer Jim Street on the television show SWAT. Burt Reynolds convinced the show's producer, Aaron Spelling, to allow Robert to read for the part. The show will be canceled after 12 episodes in 1976. Now, two years later in 1978, Producer Aaron Spelling created a new television series called Vegas. Spelling remembered Yurik from his TV show SWAT, and Robert was picked to play a Las Vegas private detective named Dan Tanner. One of his co-stars was Tony Curtis, who played a casino owner. From 1978 until the show ended in 1981, it'll earn two nominations for the Golden Globe. In 1978, Robert and Heather adopted a son, Ryan. When Ryan grows up and after his dad, Robert Yurk, passes away of cancer, Ryan will become a doctor in his dad's honor. Two years after Ryan, the Yurks will adopt a daughter, Emily. Emily will become an emergency room nurse in later life. Also in 1980, on July the 6th, Robert will lose his dad, John Paul Urich, at the age of 69. And in 1984, it'll be The Ice Pirates with Mary Crosby. The next year, in 1985, Robert will become Spencer in Spencer for Hire, an ABC TV show about a Boston private detective. The series will co-star Avery Brooks, and run until 1988. In 1989, Robert Yurk will win the part of Jake Spoons in the TV miniseries Lonesome Dove. Who can forget the powerful scene where Jake is about to be hung by his friends and he says, Oh, you don't need to tie me up, Newt. Hell, I ain't kill nobody. I just fell in with these boys to get me through the territory. Hell, I was going to leave them first change I got. The look on Jake's face when he realized that he's going to be hung. But to keep his friends from doing it, he spurs his horse in a noble gesture. After Lonesome Dove, Robert will continue his career. On December the 12th, 1995, he'll receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 7083 Hollywood Boulevard. Now, the next year, Robert will star in his 16th television series, The Lazarus Man, an American Western series that first aired on January the 20th, 1996, and ended on November the 9th. Yerk said that he thought he had struck gold. Can you imagine what the chances are for someone to actually get a hit TV show and how much money a star can make? Lazarus was ordered by TNT for another season after the first one did so well. However, tragedy struck in July when Bob Urich was diagnosed with stage 4 synovial cell or sarcoma, a very rare cancer. 
Yurik informed Castle Rock Entertainment that he had cancer, but never said that he wouldn't be able to act. They canceled the show anyway and refused to pay him the $1.47 million for the second season. Robert said the next nine months was strictly hell, with chemotherapy, radiation, and two operations. Lost his hair and crying every day from aggressive treatment and experimental drugs. In 1998, doctors declared Robert cancer-free. After his bout with cancer, Bob and Heather established the Heather and Robert Urich Fund for Sarcoma Research. Also in 1998, Robert and Heather will adopt their third child, Allison Grady Urich. In November of 2001, doctors discovered lumps in his neck. With the use of experimental drugs, he was able to continue working. And in 2002, Bob will star with Ann Archer in his last movie, Night of the Wolf. Around the 9th of April 2002, Robert Urich was admitted to the Los Robos Hospital and Medical Center in Thousand Oaks, California for breathing problems. Within a week from entering the hospital, on the 16th of April, 2002, with his wife and children by his side, Robert Michael Urick passed away from cancer at the age of 55. Robert will be cremated at his request, and his remains will be placed in the family vacation home plot in Prince Edward County, Ontario, Canada. On December the 24th, 2017, at the age of 68, Robert Urich's wife, actress Heather Menzies Urich, passed away from cancer, the disease that she and Robert fought so hard against. Lonesome Doves tells little of the early years of Newt Dobbs. It starts with him being a 17-year-old orphan raised by Captains McRae and Call. He knew his mother was a prostitute named Maggie, who had died when he was a child, but he had no idea who his dad was. The author, Larry McMurtry, said in his book, Newt was the lonesome dove of lonesome dove. Newt had ideas that Gus McRae or Jake Spoons might be his dad, but Gus finally informs him that he is the son of Captain Woodrow Call. A part of Newt Dobbs, went to the actor Ricky Schroeder, whose birth name is Richard Bartlett Schroeder, Jr. Ricky was born the 13th of April, 1970, in Brooklyn, New York, and raised on Staten Island. His parents is Richard Sr. and Diane Schroeder. Both parents worked for AT&T. His dad started as a repairman and worked his way up to management. Ricky had one older sister, Dawn, born April the 3rd, 1967. Dawn will grow up and become a model and actress. She'll marry Bradley Gregg, who was an actor on the TV show Silver Spoons with her brother. Ricky said he must have been a pretty baby because his mother was carrying him to photo shoots by the time he was six months old. She had quit her job at AT&T to look after and take care of him and his sister Dawn. She was determined to see that Ricky was in show business. So by the time he was six years old, he had already appeared in 60 ads and commercials. After going to audition after audition, at the age of nine, he will star in his first film, The Champ, with John Voight and Faye Dunaway. Voight played an ex-boxing champ that has to go back into the ring to regain custody of his son, TJ, played by Ricky. Ricky won a Golden Globe as a promising newcomer for his performance when he cries uncontrollably because his boxer dad dies during a bout at the end of the film. After the champ in 1979, his mother took Ricky out of the third grade to go to California to further his career. Mr. Schroeder remained with his job at AT&T but would fly each week from New York to L.A. to be with his family. 
Ricky will be selected the next year in 1980 to play with William Holden in The Earthling, filmed in Australia, about a man that has terminal cancer and goes back home to the outback to peacefully die. When a 10-year-old boy is left alone after his parents is killed when their camper is wrecked, William Holden's character teaches Ricky how to survive in the outback. Holden, while filming the earthling, made such an impression on young Ricky Schroeder that years later he will name his son Holden after William. In 1982, on September the 25th, at the age of 11, Ricky will begin playing Ricky Stratton on NBC's TV sitcom Silver Spoons. He will play the son of a millionaire born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Joel Higgins will play Ricky's immature, wealthy dad. Silver Spoons will run until 1987. Ricky once stated that he was glad that the sitcom had ended because he is not comfortable doing comedy. He had always been a serious actor. And at the age of 17, Ricky's mother enrolled him in Calabasa High School in Calabasa, California. Ricky had trouble adjusting to school routine. Always being tutored, he wasn't used to sitting in the classroom all day and having to raise his hand before he could speak. Sometime after his 18th birthday, Ricky was offered the part of Newt Dobbs in the Western miniseries Lonesome Dove. It'll help him move from a teenage actor to a serious adult. Lonesome Dove was the right part at the right time. Now this is Ricky with part of the cast of Lonesome Dove. Lonesome Dove was filmed at the Moody Ranch located on the banks of the Rio Grande some 140 miles west of San Antonio. Several years later, Ricky told about going back to the Lonesome Dove set location to reminisce and finding that it had fallen in and mostly disappeared. After Lonesome Dove, Ricky enrolled in Mesa State College in Grand Junction, Colorado, where he majored in ranch management. He had purchased a 15,000-acre ranch near Grand Junction in 1990. Although he was spending most of his time at the ranch, he still took time to audition for parts. And in 1991, he won a part in Blood River, a movie made for television. And while Ricky was in Canada, where the movie was being filmed, he met student Andrea Menard, who had been a fan of Ricky's growing up. Now this is Andrea and Ricky on the set of Blood River. And this is Ricky with Andrea on their wedding day, 26th of September, 1992. They'll have four children through the years. Their first son is Holden Richard Schroeder, that Richard named after William Holden. The family was devastated when 15-year-old Holden was struck by a truck while riding a dirt bike. His helmet was thrown off and his body went under the truck striking his head on the truck's axle. Holden will have two surgeries, and it'll take a year to recover. He'll become an actor. Three years after starring in Lonesome Dove, Ricky will be asked to resume his part as Newt Dobbs in 1993's Return to Lonesome Dove. John Voigt will play Captain Call, replacing Tommy Lee Jones. The movie starts after Captain Call returns Gus's body back to Lonesome Dove and desires to take a herd of wild mustangs from Texas to Montana. It was a four-part miniseries on CBS from November the 14th through the 17th in 1993. The same year as Return to Lonesome Dove was released, Andrea and Ricky will have their second son, Luke William Schroeder on 1 August 1993. Luke will also become an actor. In 1995, Schroeder will play Lieutenant Paul Hellman in Crimson Tide, about a stage mutiny on a nuclear submarine. Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman played sub-commanders. On September the 14th, 1997, the Schroeders will have their third child, a daughter they name Cambry. She'll become a model and actress. 
She stated that while she was growing up, all her friends were interested in was trying to find a way through her to meet her daddy. Now the next year, a new TV series called NYPD Blue asked Ricky to play Detective Danny Sorison. The show will last until 2001. In the summer of 1998, Ricky and Andrea designed and built their own Colorado ranch home. Andrea has become a noted designer. The Schroeders love ranch life, and Ricky would only make one or two movies per year so that he could spend more time with family on the ranch. In 2001, Ricky announced he would not return to NYPD Blue because he wanted to spend more time with his growing family. Now, this is Ricky and Andrea with their new daughter, Faith Ann, born August the 8th, 2001 in Colorado. Around 2007, the Schroeders moved back to California and bought this Malibu beachfront home. While Faith Ann was attending Malibu Middle School, Ricky became so concerned about the contaminated soil around the school that he took his daughter out to be homeschooled. Now, in the following year, Ricky will appear in numerous TV sitcoms and movies such as Scrubs, a TV series, where he played Nurse Paul Flowers. He played 12 episodes as Mike Doyle in TV series 24. Ricky will write and direct Black Cloud, a movie about a young Navajo who wanted to box on the Olympic boxing team. In 2013, the family took on a project. It was called Our Wild Hearts a movie written by Ricky and co-written by Andrea. Ricky also directed and starred with his oldest daughter, Cambry. His two sons, Holden and Luke, were also members of the cast. After 24 years of marriage, in June 2016, Ricky and Andrea Schroeder filed for divorce on irreconcilable differences. After several years of separation, it appears that Ricky and Andrea are separated, but are still married. I guess love is a hard thing to give up. Clara Allen, played by Angelica Houston, was proof that you didn't have to be a prostitute to have a good heart. Clara was an old sweetheart of Gus McCray's. She lived on a ranch near Platte River in Nebraska with her invalid husband who was in a coma from being kicked in the head by a horse. Everyone, it seemed, that was on their way to Montana or anywhere else they were going, seemed to stop by Clara's. When Gus arrived, they quickly renewed old flames. Now, who would not love a woman like Clara that welcomes an old lover with her husband upstairs in bed? She makes room in her house for Gus's prostitute girlfriend, Lori, and then agrees to take in a new baby that... Elmira, the mother, stopped by just long enough to have, and then gives a job and place to live to the baby's daddy when he shows up. Actress Angelica Houston was born the 8th of July, 1991, at the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Los Angeles. Angelica was born into Hollywood royalty. Her dad was a award-winning actor and director, John Houston who was the son of actor Walter Houston. When Angelica was born, her dad was in Africa filming The African Queen with Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn. It'll take two days before getting the news about his daughter. Her mother was prima ballerina and model Enrique Sama, the fourth wife of John Houston. She was 21 and John was 44 when they married. When Angelica was born, she had one older brother, Walter Anthony Houston, everyone called Tony. Tony was born on April the 16th, 1950. He had become an actor and noted writer. In 1953, the Houston family moved from California to Ireland. They will purchase a 110-acre estate called St. Clarence in County Galway. Now, this is Angelica at the age of seven. 
She said he was lonely at this state with only Tony to play with. She will attend the prestigious Kyle Moore Abbey School as a young girl. By this time, her parents were growing apart, with John away so much filming. They separated, and her mother, Enrica, that everybody called Ricky, moved with Angelica and Tony to London. Angelica would attend the prestigious Holland Park School in London. When she was 11, her half-brother Danny Salas Houston was born on May the 14th, 1962, although her dad was still married to her mother. John had a relationship outside the marriage. Danny will become an actor, writer, and director in later life. Some two years after Danny was born, on the 26th of August, 1964, Ricky gave birth to Angelica's half-sister, Allegra, outside of marriage. Angelica called Allegra Legs as a nickname. In 1968, Angelica made her debut appearing in her dad's film, A Walk with Love and Death, that was released in 1969. On January the 29th, 1969, tragedy struck when her mother, Ricky Sumner, lost her life in an automobile accident. The prima ballerina and model was 39 years old. She'll be cremated and her remains given to family. After her mother's death, Angelica will move from London to New York and work as a model. And in 1972, she moved to California to live with her dad and his new wife. A few months after moving in with her dad, Angelica met actor Jack Nicholson at a Hollywood party. She said it was love at first sight. This is Jack and Angelica at home in 1974. In 1979, she told her dad that she wanted to be an actress. She had dabbled in acting, but was never serious. Her dad said, Honey, ain't you a little bit old for that? She said that she was 28 at the time. She had turned down several parts working with her boyfriend, Jack Nicholson, in the past. But in 1980, after leaving her daddy's home and driving down Coldwater Canyon at dusk, a fast car clipped the car ahead of her. All she seen, she said, was headlights. When she woke up and reached up to wipe blood from her face, she discovered that her nose was gone. It will take several surgeries at Cedars Sinai Hospital and time to heal her face. After recuperating from her accident, this is Angelica and Jack at their Malibu Beach home in 1983. After her accident, she started looking for parts and making her own paycheck. She moved out of Jack's house, even though their romance will continue until 1990. In 1985, she will appear in Prezi's Honor, directed by her dad, John Houston, and starring with her boyfriend, Jack Nicholson. She will win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in this film. She was now the third member of her family, after her dad and granddad, to win an Oscar. This is Angelica with her sister Allegra celebrating their dad, John Houston's 81st birthday on the 5th of August, 1987. On the 28th of August, three weeks after this picture was taken, actor, producer, and director John Houston passed away from pneumonia, complications of lung disease. Two years later, in 1989, Angelica was star with Ron Silver in Enemies, a Love Story. For her performance, she will be nominated for the Academy Award. That same year, she will star as Clara Allen in the TV miniseries Lonesome Dove. Here she is as Clara with Gus McRae, played by Robert Duvall. Clara not only welcomes Gus after 15 years of absence, but also welcomes his lover, Lori Wood, played by Diane Lane. On top of that, Clara gets attached to a baby that's mother had stopped by long enough 
for it to be born and then leaves it at Clara's so she could keep searching for outlaw lover D. Boone. Then July Johnson, the real husband, comes to Clara's searching for his crazy wife, Ellie, acting like he is as crazy as she is, finding out that he has a baby boy. Now he leaves the baby with Clara so he can continue searching for his wife. However, July does return to Clara's, where she offers him a job so she would not lose the baby that she had become so attached to. Proving once and for all that you don't have to be a prostitute to have a good heart. The next year, in 1990, the movie The Witches will be released. Angelica will play the Grand High Witch, where while staying at a motel with his grandmother, a small boy spies on a convention of witches plotting to turn all the kids in England into talking mice. The crew said they admired the professional way that Angelica handled the seven hours of makeup being applied and then five hours of taking it off without complaining. The next year in 1991, she'll become Morticia Adams in The Adams Family with Raul Julia as Gomez Adams and Christopher Lloyd as Uncle Fester Adams. Angelica will be nominated for a Golden Globe for her portrayal of Morticia Adams. Two years later, she'll star in a sequel, Adams Family Values. On the 23rd of May, 1992, Angelica Houston will marry Robert Graham. Robert was born in Mexico and was a noted sculptor. She had known Robert a couple of years before marrying. He had been married once before and had a son. After marriage, Angelica told Robert she had not moved to the Bohemian area of Venice, California, unless he built her a fortress. And this is it, located at 69 Windward Avenue, Venice. There is a high wall around it and no windows. In 1998, Angelica will star with Drew Barrymore in Ever After, a play on the Cinderella story. Doug Ray Scott will play Prince Henry, Barrymore will play free-thinking Danielle, and Houston will be the wicked stepmother. For her performance, she will win the Supporting Actors Blockbuster Entertainment Award. Now, on December 27, 2008, Angelica's only husband, Robert Graham, passed away at the Santa Monica UCLA Medical Center at the age of 70. Angelica Houston is a member of a famous Hollywood family. She is beyond any doubt Hollywood royalty. However, to me and to many, she will always be the kind-hearted Clara Alley. Lonesome Dove has one character that everybody agrees is just plain pathetic. Sheriff July Johnson from Arkansas. July, along with his 12-year-old stepson, heads out to capture Jake Spoon that had killed July's brother by a stray bullet. On the trip, his stepson gets killed, along with his deputy, Roscoe, who goes after July to tell him his wife, Elmira, or Ellie, who cares absolutely nothing for him at all, has left him to go search for her outlaw boyfriend. Poor July, he needs somebody to tell him what to do. The character of July Johnson proves what a professional actor Chris Cooper really is. Although he is the opposite of July, his acting ability convinces us that he is the slow-thinking, simple-minded character he plays. Christopher Walton Cooper was born July the 9th, 1951 in Kansas City, Missouri. His parents was Charles Sherwood Cooper, a doctor in the United States Air Force and also a cattle rancher, owning a ranch some 15 miles west of Leavenworth, Kansas. Chris's mother, Mary Ann Walton Cooper, was a housewife and mother to their two boys, Chris and the older brother, Chuck, born 1948. Chuck would become a contractor in later life. 
Now, while growing up, Chris and his family lived in the suburbs of Kansas City. And during the summer, he and his brother worked on their dad's cattle ranch. And I mean worked. Everything from working cattle, branding, castrating, feeding, and riding fence. Chris went to Southwest Kansas City High School. And during high school, he got involved with a local theater group, learning carpenter work and building sets and working behind the scenes. In 1969, he'll graduate from high school and enlist in the U.S. Coast Guard Reserve. He will also work as a carpenter during his enlistment. In 1972, Chris enrolled at the University of Missouri, studying drama and later agriculture, so he could go back to the ranch and raise cattle if he was unable to become an actor. After college, Chris went to New York City and started taking acting lessons from acting coach Stella Adler. He shared a one-room flat with four other would-be actors. He paid his way by doing carpenter work, refinishing apartment buildings. He had also become a set builder for a stage production. His first taste of acting was when he was drafted from the ranks of the set builders to stand in for Tom Berenger as the paper boy in Streetcar Named Desire. Chris had to learn 11 lines in one hour. After making it through the performance, Berenger returned for the next show. On July the 8th, 1983, Christopher Cooper will marry Mary Ann Leon, whom he had met in acting class. Chris said on their first date, she helped him carry sheetrock up eight flights of stairs. He knew then that she was the woman for him. Chris and Mary Ann will become a traditional married couple, not like most of Hollywood. They'll be interested in assisting in each other's career and giving helpful advice. Mary Ann will perform in numerous movies through the years. The Thin Blue Line in 1988. Goodfellas in 1990. She'll be in nine episodes of The Sopranos and others. Chris will remain a stage actor for several years before transferring his talent to film. In 1987, he will star in his debut movie, Matt One. He will work with James Earl Jones and Mary McDonald. When a union organizer comes to a small West Virginia coal mining town to organize coal miners, and come up against the notorious Baldwin Phelps Detective Agency. Chris was 36 years old when he made his debut in film. Also in October 1987, Chris and Mary Ann will have a son, Jesse Lanier Cooper. Jesse was born premature of a cerebral hemorrhage that would develop into cerebral palsy. Like all loving parents, the Coopers strive to make Jesse's life happy and normal as possible. Although Jesse was physically handicapped and used electronic devices to communicate, here he is at the Silver Regional High School near home in Kingston, Massachusetts. Amazingly, Jesse was an honor student and wrote poetry. Unfortunately, he suffered from frequent seizures that slowly grew worse in time. On January the 5th, 2005, 17-year-old Jesse Lanier Cooper passed away from a particularly powerful seizure. Jesse is rested near his family home. The Coopers have won their battle for education rights and happiness for their son Jesse, and now they're teaching others to be able to do the same. In 1989, just two years after the birth of Jesse, Chris will become Sheriff July Johnson in the miniseries Lonesome Dove. July goes on an adventure across the West, chasing Jake Spoons, who accidentally killed July's brother from a stray bullet. He changed courses when he's told that his new wife, Elmire, or Ellie, has gone chasing after her outlaw lover. Slow thinking July has a hard time making a decision and manages to get people around him killed, like his 12-year-old stepson that went with him to chase Jake Spoons, and his deputy Roscoe who couldn't think much better than July. 
not to speak of his wife, Ellie, who had rather get killed by the Sioux out on the prairie than to come back to her husband. July ends up working for Clara Allen on her ranch, and Clara ends up taking care of July's son, Martin. Now, July will finally get enough courage to ask Clara to marry him, like this. Uh, would you ever, would you ever marry me? And the answer, no. In 1993, Chris Cooper will continue his role as July Johnson in The Return of Lonesome Dove, a six-hour miniseries on CBS. In Return to Lonesome Dove, Clara's ranch burns and half of July's face is scarred. They will take Clara's ranch horses and drive them all the way to Captain Call's Montana ranch. July will find love again in Gus McRae's estranged daughter. Three years later in 1996, Chris will star with Matt McConaughey and Chris Christopherson in Long Star, about a Texas border town where a long ago murder of a previous sheriff was discovered. In 1998, it'll be the Horse Whisperer with Robert Redford. Chris said that what he loved about making this movie was that Redford rode on one side of the valley and him on the other giving hand signals as to how to direct the cattle. He said ranch life came back to him quickly. In 2002, he played John LaRoche, who has a love for flowers, especially orchids, mainly ghost orchids, that are very expensive. John ventures into the Florida swamps with a team of Native Americans in order to steal orchids. Chris starred with Meryl Street and Nicolas Cage. For his part as John LaRoche, Chris Cooper will win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his part in the movie adaptation. From his Kingston, Massachusetts home, Academy Award winner Chris Cooper, his actor's wife Marina Leone, stay busy reading through acting parts. But mostly their hearts is with their son Jesse and the joy of seeing Jesse through the Jesse Cooper Foundation helping other kids with cerebral palsy.